What is up, you sexy nerds? I am Wildfire One. You're watching and listening to Nerds New Sexy Entertainment, the podcast. This is episode 148, season eight. With me today is J Mac. I hi. <laughs> 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 oh hi guys hi i <laughs> j mac has never seen the movie orgasmo so I, I i introduced him to it yesterday last night we watched it yes. and um then he introduced me to something we'll talk about later as well <laughs> <laughs> the, the, oh we God, had we, 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 we probably minutes. ranted about that for like what 45 minutes Yes, and it was fucking hilarious. Yeah. We're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. You guys are going to follow along as we as we retrace our steps. Oh, thank you, Internet. Thank you for explaining this shit. But anyway. Yes. So, first and foremost, Orgasmo. Come on, man. We got to admit, it is, it's, a, it's a love child between yes. our, our favorite South Park creators, Matt oh, and Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and a bit of background. I first learned about Orgasmo when I was on my Mormon mission, by the way, from a no, for, from a fellow missionary. He told me about Orgasmo, and I didn't believe him at first. Aren't you I from thought, the state that they say... I'm from Utah, yeah. Yeah, I'm so, Utah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm the line they use in the show! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Aren't you from... Yeah, so I, was waiting, I was setting you up for that. But yeah, it's... a. Uh, so you heard about it from a fellow missionary. More, but yes, I learned it from another Mormon. <laughs> now you're a man. But yeah. A uh, man, 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 man. <laughs> I got to explain to J-Mac that the name of the band is DVDA. Double vag- vaginal, double anal. And <laughs> they, they put that in. The, we'll get to that, though. Yeah. So give us, well, why don't you give us the rundown on what you thought of uh, of of the show? Like, what did you think of? So it was funny because, like, my friend on my mission had told me kind of the plot of it because he had seen it. He had seen the whole thing, and he said it was one of the funniest movies ever. Oh, it is. It's um, one of my favorite movies to this yeah. day. I wasn't expecting what I saw. Like, he he didn't – his description didn't do it justice. It okay. was so funny. It was so good. Oh, my God. So what were you expecting? I mean, so – he had gotten a couple of the plot elements mixed up. Like the kidnapping of the girlfriend happened earlier in the movie for, in his plot description, at mm. least in my brain, probably seen it, you know, and just forgot a lot about it. You know, when, Cause you yeah. know, when you see something, it gets all mixed up at one point. Mm-hmm. You just know it's a good movie. Yeah. The, the fucking faces that that dude was making like, okay. It being a, like a Trey Parker, Matt Stone, I was expecting them to be a little more like raunchy with it, but like, I like how the just it was like a whole corruption of that dude. Like he like his fucking reactions to everything were just like spot on perfect. I want to sound like a queer or anything, but I think unicorns are kick ass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, hey, look, not to sound like a queer or anything, but uh, I want to make love to you. Yeah, it's just <laughs> like the character, and that's another thing. I like the characters. Like we'll go, let's yes. go over the characters. We got they we were- got the main character yeah. who's what the. The more the main Mormon guy, yeah, the Mormon missionary, yeah, and uh, who can kick ass, by the way, yes, and that's why he was hired. Actually, he's a martial artist, and then yeah. you have uh, the guy. I I can't remember the the real names. I just remember Joe Young or Tom Hung. Yeah, Joe Young, jo- Tom Hung, yes. But uh, and then I can't remember who Chota what Chota Boy's real name was in the in the uh, in the his series. real name was Chota Boy. Yeah, we'll just call him Chota Boy. But the the character was fucking hilarious. I mean, yeah. Uh, he he's he's just like a really they keep calling him Tiny Tim and shit like that. Maybe his name is Tim. Maybe I, I can't remember. But then you got yeah. like G G Fresh G Fresh, <laughs> which is fucking okay. hilarious. I learned from Sunray actually that he was like the actual owner of like a regular eight like a regular sushi bar that they ate at regularly, and they asked him, "Hey, you want to be in a movie?" He's like, "Uh, yeah." Oh, if that's if that's the true if that's the true statement, that's fucking great. Yeah. Like, I, I could yeah, see it I being it. a thing, because that sounds like Matt and Trey, right? Yes. That, that absolutely sounds like Matt and Trey. Nothing is more sad than a sad Japanese man. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, the movie was actually way more compelling than I thought. Yeah, it, was. it um... I thought it was just going to be a silly movie, but, like, no, it was way... It was pretty it compelling. Had a good, it had a good origin story for a superhero. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, that, and also, like, it gave some good commentaries on, like, the porn industry and, like... Oh, the judgmental complex of 
certain Mormons. What? Specifically Utah Mormons. Like, holy yes. fuck. Yes. The, but you know what? I will say this. Um, and we saw him as soon as you saw Ron Jeremy. Because Ron Jeremy oh was in this movie. For those of you who don't know, like, Ron Jeremy is a yeah, huge I, I, porn I, star. I saw him. I'm like, wait, that's Ron Jeremy. Yeah, you're like, wait, is that? And I'm like, yep, that's Ron Jeremy. Yep. And <laughs> and he was he was it was fucking great. Like it was it was amazing. That it was a much younger Ron Jeremy. Like, oh my god. Oh, younger than today. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like uh, twenty year, like twenty thirty years ago. You know, I don't, I can't remember when it came out. Let me look. Let me look. Out. Yeah, look I'm up. Look up. Nineteen ninety seven. Or okay, Orgasmo okay. came out in nineteen ninety seven. Yeah. Isn't that insane? Yeah. Wow. It's like it's crazy. Like it's crazy. Yeah. I would have thought it would have been like in early two thousands at the like maybe two thousand four. It was good that it well it's good that Ron Jeremy was in it because yeah. it was almost it was almost like the icing on the pornographic cake. <laughs> so Trey Parker played the lead role. Yeah. Like right? Who and he plays a Mormon missionary who has a fiance and Okay, so I can actually speak from a little bit of experience. They were talking about oh you need money to m- marry in the in the, the temple. temple. That's not true. Uh it's a pain in the ass to get it scheduled. It's a pain in the ass. That's, I'm sure that, I can that, I can imagine that because I'm sure so, everyone wants to do it. So many Mormons want to get married in the Mormon or in the Salt Lake Temple. Okay, um, it, it's ridiculous. It's, it's like pick, like I'll be honest. For Mormons, pick a different temple. So I, I get that. That it, so you're basically debunking mm-hmm. the whole like it's too expensive to get married there. Yeah, it was a it was a plot. It was a plot. Device yeah, it was a plot. Movie. It was a good plot device though. Yeah, and that's what I liked because like I liked that they were like. It, they, they were they were all obvi- because uh, Trey and Matt Trey Parker and Matt Stone are all obvi- they're they're ex Mormons. I like that they mocked the church without like really like going into it because without like, going too they, far. Like they did this South Park version of mocking things because South Park just mocks everyone. Everyone they yeah. mocked Los Angeles people. They mocked poor the porn industry. They mocked the Mormons. It they, exploits they, men. Exploits women. Yeah. Exploits men by exploiting women. <laughs> and, and, and it exploits and then Ron Jeremy says this and then it exploits people and it was just like a it was a beautiful moment hearing oh, yeah. him say that yeah but there's a few more characters yeah. i wanted to mention like oh yeah so there sancho was... oh sancho. sancho my name is sancho so there are many toms in the world there are many paws but i anthony Bender antonio banderas is he sancho no <laughs> you I you are sancho. not sancho i fucking <laughs> love sancho yeah and then that security guard like you see him twice in the movie. The first time you see him, he's like, "I'm gonna cut your nuts off." <laughs> okay, so I, I, I mean, there's a bunch of different characters. There's the, there's like uh-huh. uh, Max Orbison's like nephew, who we all agree is a big dick. He's a big asshole. It's the guy that's like, "Come here, fuck you." The guy that farts in his hand and fucking. Oh, uh, yeah, the guy who neutered man, Neuterbol- neutered man. Yeah. yeah, fuck him. Yeah, fuck he's that guy. Cunt. He, they, they went out of the way to write him like. As an asshole, purposely, and they did a good job. So okay, yeah, let's start with the let's start with the 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 whole like plot line, and I know you're you're dying to tell us, so go for it. So it starts with these Mormon missionaries who are going door to door, you know, as 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 Mormon missionaries do. Do what Mormons do. These guys like, and it was very funny because every time they knocked on the door, I thought they were going to be knocking on the porn door. <laughs> yeah, they did good about that. They kept us going yeah, up until like the por- you, it kept cutting to the porn scene. And like I'm like, oh shit! This door that they're knocking on—that's the porn door. That's gonna be it. Then, that's gonna be it. The, the the one that actually made me laugh the most was the old lady. Oh, you're the Mormons, aren't you? Because they're like, oh, you have such a beautiful garden. And they're like, oh, you're like, oh, you're the Mormons, aren't you? And he's like, yeah, we are. Well, you can fuck right off. <laughs> you can shove that book right up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it's a little old lady, so you're not expecting her to like. <laughs> Yeah, have such no, a potty mouth. Yeah, no, like old ladies. Like when you knock on a door and an old lady opens the door. Normally in Mormon culture, you've hit a gold mine because old ladies are the nicest fucking people ever. They'll listen to you even if they think you're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> they'll 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 at least be polite to give you like cook polite enough to give you like cookies and shit. So that was a very good subversion. Mm-hmm. I liked that. And it just out of um, nowhere, you know, yeah. You guys can yeah. fuck right off. It just gets, you, the, what? What? Yeah, I think you're full of shit. You it's, can shove your book of Mormon up your ass. And then they get the door slammed on them, and they're always like, "Have a nice day." Yeah, yeah. They go to the they go to the porn 
porn house, right? After a few s- s- yeah. being slammed in her face, doors being yeah. slammed in her face. And they knock on the door, um, right in the middle of the porn scene. They they send the security the guy the dude sends the security guard up, right? Um and they're like, oh, hey, we're here to share our love with Jesus Christ. He comes up to the porn guy. They're from Jesus. Yeah, you got some guys from Jesus? <laughs> oh, cut their balls off. <laughs> Sorry, I got to cut your balls off now. Yeah. And so then, like, so then they send out the security guards and the, they beat the shit out of them. The other mission companion runs. Just and fucking I don't takes know, off. And I don't know where the fuck he goes because normally mission companions stick together. Yeah, like you know, that, there that was, was no buddy stuff. system. There was no buddy there, system. Yeah, there was no buddy buddy system, and I don't know, like, because he, he obviously he went back to his apartment, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know where the mission companion went. You don't see I, him maybe. any time after this at all. Like, yeah. there's yeah, he doesn't exist was, after that. But this movie just throws out the window, and that's fine. The, I mean, so well, he was more, they were getting their ass kicked, yeah. and this guy was like yeah. being a you know, this, so yeah. like, it just showed the other guy was a chicken shit. That's all. Yeah, and so like the, he sends more security guards out, and this guy like just starts like fucking kung fu fucking karate mastering these guys asses in like i don't know you said it was trey parker who played him right yes trey parker i don't know if trey was... parker like did any background but like honestly he looked like he knew what he was doing oh not the okay, not yeah. the not the mormon part you i remember you saying he was, you know yeah, I, no. unless mormons like came out with a black belt that's just <laughs> I, jesus I'm a on it belt and I'm a black belt in Jesus food. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, what, once you like, see, look, you start as a deacon when you turn 12, a teacher when you turn 14 and a priest when you turn 16. And then you start the martial arts and, and, and all throughout that you're training in martial arts. <laughs> Goku style. Go, yeah. You're learning about gerbil style. Honestly. Ger- oh no. Uh, was it gerbil <laughs> or was it style. hamster? Yes. <laughs> Which we'll get funny. to that. That shit was yeah, we'll great. Get to that. But anyway, um, the dude who had just like fired his previous porn star for not knowing how to fight and breaking his pinky. I he hurt my finger. Yeah, that nah. was so fucking good. He he sees this dude. He sees uh, uh, Trey Parker fighting John. Yeah, John Young fighting. Yeah. and like like that's how you fight. Yeah. So he he brings on the dude. He originally offers like five thousand dollars and like he's like oh man. Yeah, and John's like I can't, I can't do it. This is porn. Yeah, I can't. It, it keeps upping the number until eventually he's like, okay, I'll give you twenty thousand dollars. I don't care what religion I'm in. If someone said twenty thousand dollars, even to like even did uh, that? Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, I'll I'll be honest. I would at least like a, a, as soon as I hear twenty thousand dollars, I'd be I'd be on board immediately. I would pretend. That I'm not on board. See if he gets to get to the fifty thousand mm, dollars. Okay, that makes sense. I would look. I would do. I would be orgasmal for fifty thousand dollars, even when I was on my Mormon mission. Fuck, fifty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand is a lot too. You know, for two days shootings. I would. Although I would make sure there was a written contract because that was the thing that the guy didn't do. Mm-hmm. There was no written contract, so he didn't get the money because the guy was planning on turning just turning him to a porn star, which is yeah, yeah. Which is a really like big commentary on the porn industry, which is interesting. I liked that aspect of it because it showed how big... it can be yeah. it can be bad. Yes, as a consumer of porn, I like I I've understood the porn industry. I don't care, but I've understood the porn industry. I I more respect independent porn artists, honestly. Yes, yes. The movie speaks volumes about how like corrupt it can be. Another thing about this that I rather enjoy is that it shows. Because we we can both agree that Joe Joe Young is a very like spotless soul. Yes, <laughs> it shows it shows that like corruption happens. Like I'm yes. not saying it corrupted him to being a really bad person, mm-hmm. but it showed he got to see the like, other side of the world. He was still clearly a very good person at the end of the movie. Yeah, but like no. Jesus, he was where pure? Yeah, that was so funny. Like Je- Jesus, man, where where? <laughs> but oh, yeah, uh, no. so they wrote. It shows it shows the corruption. I like that because it shows. I mean, that there's a lot of realism to that. Yes, absolutely. Got hired for twenty thousand dollars, which again, like I, I'll say, twenty thousand dollars, I'd be on board for two days shooting. Yeah, for two. Yeah, two days of shooting. That's ten thousand dollars a day. Like Jesus, man. That's Where? <laughs> twenty thousand dollars. Like that's more than I. Yes, earn that's that's in a month in a year. That's that, a lot of money. That's a lot of money, and. And he was all about, like you were saying at the beginning, he was all about, oh, well, we could, that's a good start for, for the wedding for, 
for getting married at the temple. You know, when he's talking to Max Orbison, which is the name of the bad guy, when he's talking to him, he's like, I got to think about it. And he's like, you start you start Monday morning, 10 a.m. Yeah. on the a.m. I'm going to, can I think about it? Sure. But you start Monday morning. It's like, that feels, that, very that forced. felt very real to like, me. Very forced and rapey, if you think about mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Oh my God. Fuck him. Especially yeah. towards the end. But we'll get mm-hmm. to that one. Um, yeah. So what's next? Lead us along. Okay. So after that, he stars in the movie, and they they he they promise him that he's going to have a stunt cock. He can't a have intercourse thing. with anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Although they make they make him like grow people like they, yeah. they, they, they anything other than penetration he has to do himself. Yeah. If they're grinding like, and stuff like that, he's actually got to mm-hmm. be there for it, and he's actually got to look like he has fun. And it's I a really porno. like. Yeah, I really liked how they got him to like. Make, like you could see the oh shit look in his eyes like, oh, all God. the time. Like I, yeah, he looked like a deer in the headlights. Yes, of all the time, all the time. It was so good. Hundred percent was reactions to like stuff people say and do. Like he's never seen that before. You know, like yeah. uh, there's there were scenes where like girls were getting undressed and doing stuff, and he just looked at him like <laughs> and he just like hides behind the dressing yeah. curtain. <laughs> The, and and uh, he, that's where he meets Chota Boy in that scene, actually. Yes. And, uh, yes. I like Chota Boy. Chota Boy was great. He was a great addition. And Chota Boy has a giant dildo on, like, a wrestling helmet. Yeah, on his head. It's just like, what the fuck? Help me, Chota Dog. And the dog has, like... <laughs> I also like that um, uh, the character doesn't know what Chode means. Because, just... like, okay... Normally, every other word he he hates, like he can't say the ass fuck twins later on. He can't say he any can't words, curse. Right? He doesn't. He's but he he's calls good. he actually calls his partner partner Choda boy, and a chode for those of you not in the know, and I hope those of you who listen to this podcast are in the know. I'm sure they do, but inform. It's a short fat cock. Can't uh, we just call them the naughty twins? <laughs> but that's yeah, anyway. that's the beauty of of um. Of this he character. gets roped. Yeah, he gets roped in this porn. They get, they call him the stunt cock a few times. When T Rex comes on, though, oh god! Like he has to go to his happy place. <laughs> he fucking completely dissociates, and he's just like remembering the good time. Like, okay, T Rex is a big lady, a giantly yeah, big lady. And, yeah, and his girlfriend, uh, by the way, his girlfriend thinks he's doing a sh- film. Uh, uh, He's filming uh, Death of a Salesman. Death of a Salesman. He's playing Biff, right? Is that the name? Mm-hmm. And uh, Biff, yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. there's a scene where, where you know, he's he's got to do something with his T-Rex gal. And he, we have no idea what she looks like. Mm-hmm. And they bring her out and, like, you already hear, like, the it's like earthquakes. <laughs> like, boom. Are you going to be the top or the bottom? You're going to make uh, me come. He's saying it's... Uh, 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 it's a, it, her voice is like, it's like a uh, Cartman. You're going to make me calm. It's almost like I'm going <laughs> to. Oh, yes. she's like, she like pulls them up and they're face to face. She goes, you're going to make me calm. And it's just like cringing. And he's, she's like and riding she's, on him. And, yeah. <sighs> oh my God. Like, okay. Honestly, if, if I was a porn star, that would traumatize me too. Oh my God. I would, I would have to go to my happy place. Like my. My, yes, absolutely. Like him going to his happy place had no at that point had nothing to do with him being Mormon and had everything to do with T Rex being T Rex. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and she's I mean there was no real penetration, but she was grinding on him and But T Rex I would go to my happy place too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean she wasn't I mean, okay, you can be yeah. big. And be beautiful and be yes, amazing. Yes, absolutely. She looks like they found the most hideous looking creature. Yeah, they 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 specifically they they Purposely. obviously cast someone. Purposely and mm. yeah, and I mean as far as we know, there could have been a little makeup on her to make her more. Like, she could be a pretty woman. She very could be. Yeah, she could attractive. be. She could be beautiful. Yeah, went full of clothes. Yes. But, yes. but it was a nightmare, and I could like, see. Okay, she knew what she was signing up for when she signed up for the movie. Yeah. So I don't think it's like a sexist casting, no, casting no. or anything. She knew what she was signing up for because there's also another character, an older character that he spot, speaks to, an older porn star, where the, the DVDA thing comes from. Oh God, yes. Yeah, and she says, and and he's he's like, she comes up and like he's reading the Bible. I love how I love how he he's reading the Book of Mormon, right? And I love how he thinks this is a missionary opportunity. Like <laughs> he, he even it even goes ding when he looks at the camera. It's fucking great. 
So mm-hmm. he's reading it to her, and he's and he's like, "Well, they could, they wouldn't, they wouldn't hire the Mormons for you know, X X reason." And she goes, "Well, they should have did double vaginal, double anal." Well, yeah, yeah, you can't get hired in this industry at my age if you don't do a double vaginal, double anal. <laughs> and she's like, "Now I'm the only person in this industry who does that." Very he looked traumatized. Traumatized, yeah, like <laughs> yeah. it fucked his mind up. And then later, like, like, and we're ta- later by meaning like thirty seconds later. He sees it on set. So, so yeah, because Joe was like after that, like, hey, you want to go get sushi? Like that? <laughs> He's puking. <laughs> oh my god! This movie is just so it's perfect. It's great. It's got a great plot. Yeah, it's got a great. Uh, Trey, Trey, Trey men have a great sense of humor. They have a talent for creativity. Like I mean, they're the creator, creators of South Park, so of course, but they have a fucking talent. So okay. Sushi bar. Okay, so these random gangsters um, come in, and they're like, "Yeah, we want you to sign this over to us." And like, they sign break the shit. Team. Shit happens, right? Like that. It was just kind of that, that. That whole scene was to introduce G Fresh and show and those that, assholes and show yeah. that those guys were gonna try and take over. That yeah. they really wanted the the Tim to sign over his his property mm-hmm. to them so they can expand a dance yeah, studio. And- at the end of the line, it it results in just kind of an origin story for yes. the real the, Orgasmo and yes. the real Chota Boy. Yes, which is great. Uh, after that, Chota Boy takes Orgasmo home and shows him his real <laughs> Orgasmo Raider. Which Chota Boy, the backstory for him is he's like a genius. He just he yeah, just gets into porn. He's doing porn because he just wants to get laid. Yeah. So that one scene is just simply to introduce G Fresh, which G Fresh is an Asian guy. Who speaks like a at the time hardcore gangster? Yes, yes. Like, Even if he was a minor character, he became a good part of like very key motivating factors of the movie. Yeah. So the show continues, and we'll we'll, we'll skip forward a little bit. Orgasmo, Orgasmo. Hits. It, it, it's a it's a box office smash. Mm-hmm. Like even because, outside of the porn industry, it's doing amazing. And like, because. Yeah, and because Joe Young, like me, is from Utah. I'm sorry. His girlfriend doesn't know that he's orgasmic. Can't know. Because people in Utah just don't buy porn. The dude finally gets a check at the party, but then announces his plans for Orgasmo 2. Mm-hmm. And at this point, his, his at this point, his girlfriend, well, John Young's girlfriend. Yeah, no. Fiance. Oh my god, that was one of the favorite scenes. She comes out to surprise him. Yeah. At his at like, his apartment. He, because he tells her, oh, yeah, I'm se- filming a sequel. And she's like, wait, there's no sequel. There, there's no sequel to or Death of a Salesman. Like, Actually, that's what the CIA wanted you to think. <laughs> he, he was killed for dealing smack to Nazis. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, I love that. She's like, oh, wow. Death of a Salesman always seemed boring to me. That was exciting. So anyway, he, he, he gets to his apartment once. And she surprises him by being there. He's like, he's like ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, I know we're not supposed to sleep uh, sleep together, but I think Jesus will forgive us, forgive us if I sleep on the couch. The couch, yeah. Yeah, so then, then later on, he, the, the announcement of Orgasmo 2 came out. I liked when he was, like, cleaning through the house, like, like, and then he hogs her because he sees the statue with the golden dick. Yes, because he wanted, he wanted it, like, I guess a porn Emmy, which had a giant boner. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, she's at this movie store buying movies, like, and oh my gosh, the title like Jesus, Jesus to the Revenge or something like. Oh my, God. Pulp Jesus. Right. And then she hears like on a TV overhead like, uh, Orgasmo speaking, and she's like, John, is that you? And then like she's looking around, and he's not there, and then she's like, Hey, what movie is that? And the guy's like, Oh, that. Wait, you don't know that's Orgasmo? He's like, Oh, I'm from Utah. He's like, He's like, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. so sorry. Another thing then, I liked that real quick before we go yeah. any further in the plot is that uh, the movie got so big that you you saw a kid playing with yes. the orgasmo toy. With our, and yeah, with the Chiz Master Zero. Yes. <laughs> He's like, and the kid's like, I will kill, I'll get you, Chiz Master Zero. I'll get you with my orgasmo raider. Yeah. The next part. Um, I love how he comes home and she's watching the full ass porno yep it's she, she looks mormon bitch her face which <laughs> i mean i guess she she didn't know at first correct that there was a stunt cock and he had to explain that and she's like 
<laughs> you were doing all those things with those women. He's like, no, I had a stunt cock. And that's the first time a stunt? you heard him say cock. stunt cock. Because he couldn't. because yeah, he was, he was, he, he refused to say stunt was this before the or after the ass fuck twins scene? This was I forget. way before the ass fuck twins. Up until this point, he had been unwilling to say those kinds of words. Yeah, but yeah th- that was a stunt cock. She's like, a stunt, Whoa. and like it was funny. Her face like almost lit up at the point. Like, wait, that wasn't you then? You and were like touching those women. Uh, no, that was all brought in by CG and yeah, that was CGI really and that no. was special effects. Yeah. Even though he was actually forced, anything but penetration was not a stunt cock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they, and then they got in an argument. They fought, and this is where the yeah. you know the the trauma comes in. They they're they're arguing, and in, in, uh, I mean, it's not so bad for him. Oh my for Orgasmo God. too, he got forty grand. Yes. So I, I feel we should say that, like Orgasmo two, he was offered double the amount he got in the first one. So all together for all of both movies, he got what sixty. Yes. So that's di- yeah, fuck. Grand total. Fuck Max Orbison. Find me. Yeah, Max Orbison. Uh, I'll take you for a hundred grand and two hundred grand. I'll, I'll be I'll... your. I'll be your Choda boy. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Hung decided he didn't want to be a part of this no more. Um, and like was good. he came in, but right before he came in, that's where we met Sancho. Oh my God, Sancho! Which uh, who Sa- are you? What, what, what are your calls again? I'm Sancho. <laughs> and he has this, like, amazingly sexy voice with the accent. Like, I'm Sancho. And it's how he's, and every time he said his name, you hear this, like, guitar strum in the background. And then Joe walks in, and he's like, I got to talk to you, Mr. Orbison. And you hear you hear Sancho in the background, oh, my God, it's it's Orgasmo. And he's like, I'm not yes. Orgasmo, I am Sancho. Oh, my God, that was one of the best parts. Of, like, that, the whole Sancho scene was just, like, it's not important to the plot, but it's just fucking hilarious. At that point, that's where he's like, I quit. I'm Joe's like, I quit. I'm not doing this anymore. And uh, and and Max Orbison kind of cho- chews him out. Like, you're going to do as me. He's like, I fucking tell you to. Yeah. And he's, well, he walks out. When we learn that, that's when we learn that Max Orbison also own, owns or the dance club. Yeah. Yeah. Like owns the guys who are like trying to take out G Fresh, who did take out G Fresh. Yeah. And like, um, by this point, we already knew that um, fucking Orgasmo or John Young and uh, Chota Boy attacked the dudes who had taken over G Fresh's yeah. sushi bar. They literally were like real life Orgasmo and Chota Boy. Because oh gosh, we forgot to admit. Like talk about the part where it introduces the real life orgasm. Oh yeah, well, let's go back to that real quick because that is important. Yeah. Because there's a good scene there that they yeah. they do exactly what I probably would have done if I had one of those. Yes, absolutely. Um, I would have shot. Look, wild. <laughs> if I shot you with the the orgasmo raider, that would be kinky, right? I mean, I got my. Not to sound, not to sound like a homo or anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy. I love that guy. Tonight. So yeah, they, oh they God, so yeah. yeah, we were get, actually getting to that point, and then we we forgot the little guy introduces like shows Joe all his toys and stuff, and he shows him the real life orgasm. Yeah. So they go out on they go out on night on the town after shooting each other a few times to prove that it works, and they go out on mm-hmm. night on the town. And they start shooting random people. What happens there, J Mac? Oh my God, the fucking old lady one was the funniest. Like she's like on her walker. They start shooting old people, uh, random people. They shoot an old lady. Two Jews and a cop. And a cop. At the very least. That I and, and, the, and the queer, the guy that, I'm not doing sound queer. He shoots him and he's like telling, talking to someone, has an orgasm, mm-hmm. and then goes back into talking to someone. But the cop, like he's frisking this dude. And he's just like, like, like oh, dry humping. Dry him. humping, kisses like, him. I was dying of laughter. And the dude, just like, I feel like that dude has never committed a crime ever since then. Yeah. I, I, honestly, <laughs> if that happened, or maybe he committed several more. Like if a cop, if a cop frisked me, right, and then started dry humping me and then kissed me on the lips, I would never commit another crime in my entire fucking life. Maybe I, don't I would know. never want to risk that. Okay, actually, okay. What if wait, you had a on. thing for dudes in uniform? So yeah, there's a, like a little montage of them fucking around, and then of course that's about the time they decide to go help G. Fr- oh, a little after that's about the time they go decide to help G. Fresh. Yeah, and they get G. Fresh's uh, contract back. Yes. Yeah, they, they take away the contract that he signed because I loved that scene, by the way, because they're beating the hell out of him. All he has is scratch. 
you bastards! <laughs> He's just got a little scratch. <laughs> and, they're, <laughs> and they're beating his ass. Like, they're hitting him with a baseball bat and, like, throwing him against the wall. At one point, the, at one point it looks like, like, like they're... They're throwing a rag doll, which is, you can tell it's a fake, you know. Absolutely. But that was the joke. And then Chota Boy sees that the guys who stole G Fresh's sushi bar are working for the porn director. Mm -hmm. And Chota Boy, the actor for Chota Boy, is actually pretty pissed off about this because G Fresh is obviously your friend. Go ahead. I forgot about the conversation they had at his place explaining why he doesn't do hamster style anymore. Oh shit, that's right. Yes. He quote unquote promised his dad that he wanted to do hands with Vowed. And, <laughs> and that conversation amounts to Hey dad, I don't think I'm gonna do hamster style anymore. And the dad's like, Okay, whatever. And it was it was just it was hilarious. It was a good it was a good Yeah, you know, the whole movie had such great com comedic timing. I loved the whole movie. They find out about Orbison, and Orbison's pissed. He, he basically lets Young walk out after he quits. And he tells, because the guys are going to stop him, uh, and he tells him, no, don't let him go. We're going we're gonna to do something to get him back. After uh, the girlfriend finds out that Young has become a porn star and breaks up with him. Um, and she, she so actually is coming John back Young to talk to him. John Young goes into the men. He's like, I quit because I value my girlfriend. More than I value porn, which is a good thing, by the way. And then the Orbis is like, okay, fine. We're going to kidnap his girlfriend and turn her into a porn star. Like, forcefully. They set her up to get fucked. Like, literally. Like, remember, remember when we said to be in the podcast that Orbison's pretty rapey? That is what we were talking about. Oh, God. That was so it was, creepy. It was oh very cringy. God. It was very cringy. Yeah, he taped her mouth shut. And I, I'm like, oh, shit. He's going to make it look like a bondage scene or whatever. Mm -hmm. Neutered man. The guy who played neutered man. Neutered man was his, 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 his uh, nephew, nephew. That's what it was. Yeah. God, that that guy can go suck. Yeah, they, they did a good job making him look like a dickhead. We barely talked, yeah. touched on him. But you, if you guys watch the yeah, movie, he, he's a fucking asshole. Yeah, he was a total ass white. Yeah, he was really mean to that blonde chick. That kept falling and breaking her head, neck, and shit. <laughs> she's dead. She, oh my God, she's dead. Joe basically kidnapped having to save his yeah. kidnapped his kidnapped fiance. Yeah, and, yeah, they took my cupcake, and he's like, "Oh my God, I've never seen you like this." And he, this is the first time you hear like Joe yeah. ever curse or say anything close. He goes, "I'm pissed." Yes, anything close to I'm pissed. Yes, he's I'm like, pissed on his he's own great. volition because he did say ass fuck. Twins. Yes. Like very fast, but all against his own will. That's for twins. <laughs> they go to the fucking mansion and just beat the shit out of everyone. Oh, the fight with the uh, <laughs> the fight with uh, between Chota Boy and uh, Ron Jeremy. Oh my god! Was epic. Yes. They finally get to the end, like the the main boss guy, which is yeah Orbison. Uh, yeah, Orbison. And and uh, how do they dispatch Orbison? Down? By making him come over and over. Like six times. At one point, oh one point, Shuttle Boy's like, he's never going to have orgasm or again. Okay, so we're going to be honest. Orbison was literally about to rape. Yeah. Um, or go, John's fiance, yeah. Yeah. The more or less, and then, oh, my, one of my favorite parts is the cock rocket <laughs> scene. The, you know, the first oh my one God, yes. was hilarious. And then the second one was when they blew up the house. And, of course, when they blew the house up, you could tell it was a fucking model. It, it, yeah, was, it was great. Sure. The, uh, the, so Joe and his, his, his fiance are getting ready to go back, right? And yeah. it's a sad moment. They're like, oh, it was so good. We did a lot of good stuff. And and out of nowhere, yes. like, Joe's fiance changes her mind. Like, oh, you, you know what? Yeah, it was so interesting. Like, she's like, oh, well, maybe this was God's calling for you. Yes. I'm like, okay. And then you see Jesus. Uh, oh, my God. Invisible Jesus. Oh. Like, like, force ghost Jesus, almost. It was okay. it was good. And that's about where it ended. They became real life. I like how they prayed. And, like, the, 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 the was like, I don't, I'm not religious. Like, Look, we, we're doing this anyway. He's like, okay, fine, whatever. And he's like, those, oh, no, those he's superheroes like, who pray together. He's like, stay he's together. like superheroes that pray together stay together. It was, yeah. it was, it was a good movie. So, what would you rate that on a one to ten? Eight. An eight. Yes. Would you want to see a sequel? Oh my god! So they set it up so well because the dogs are like, your, 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 your balls have swelled up to the size of tangerines. <laughs> yeah, that's at the end. Tell me something I don't know. They were talking. They were talking to Orbison after all the times mm -hmm. they got shot with a with the the, the orgasma gun. It was so interesting because so they set this up for um what's his name for Ron not Ron Jeremy for, Jam, right? for, for uh, Orbison, Max Orbison. Yeah, Max Orbison to become Nuderman. I would love to see an orgasmo too. Yes. Yes. 
So yeah, he's in he's in this like mm. chair, and the doctors tell him we're gonna have to amputate your pee pee. So Al Orbison's like, "Yeah, I got you now, Joe Young. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. You're gonna be facing neutered man. It's just yeah. And how they did it was great. So like, Matt and Trey, if you yes. ever see this, make a sequel. Yes, like Matt. We'll Matt, start it. I don't care. Matt, Matt Stone, hire me, please. We'll do it. We'll Trey do it. Parker and Matt Stone, hire us both. We'll do it. Yeah, I'll be. I'll. I, I will even be neutered, man. If you want me to. So seg- um, let's segue on to the thing that you talked to me about yesterday. <laughs> so we, he and I were talking about. Imagine what it would be like to hit, be hit with the um fucking orgasm ray. Yeah. I'm like, well, actually, this is a true story, by the way. 1994. For the, for the, 1994. For those of you who are still well listening, and the United States tried researching a gay bomb. <laughs> you can't even say, well, uh, a gay bomb. <laughs> yeah, a, a gay, gay bomb. bomb. Now, basically, it would distribute pheromones over the enemy army <laughs> to the point where it would make them so unbelievably horny for each other that they would. Fuck! Like anything yeah. and everything. Do you? What if one found a bunny rabbit? Like, oh god! They'd be wearing it as a condom while they fuck another comrade. Like, could you imagine this? American soldier, it comes gets through his fucking gas mask. <laughs> imagine this. Imagine, imagine that. He comes like, home to his wife and kids. Sorry, war changes. <laughs> <laughs> but what if they it actually did real. this? But what if they actually they implemented <laughs> this into war? Like, That's how do you strange. react to your other... You're not going to shoot them while they're fucking, are you? <laughs> so you know... <laughs> what if one of us actually got into the gas? So you know how, like, police officers and army people train like they actually have to get maced and shit like that oh. they would have to be tagged <laughs> they'd have to sit the gay bar. they'd have to sit in there with the gay gas <laughs> <laughs> oh what why do they call why couldn't they just call it the naughty bomb the naughty bomb because they're gay. Because that's what they do. They're gay. They're not the. They're not the naughty twins. They're the <laughs> ass fuck twins. <laughs> oh, so yeah, I I didn't believe this at first. I thought I heard something mm-hmm. kind of like it in the past. So I was like, and I'm like, if we're gonna talk about this, I want to make sure it's and like there were a real multiple. Thing. For, there were multiple forays into this. First of all, the U.S. the U.S. military tried creating gay bombs, and then the U.S. Air Force tried creating gay spray. Yes, gay spray. I mean, to this day, I'm still like, why call it a gay bomb? Like, <laughs> because why not? Look, well, why can't they call it like the horny bomb or like because the I'm, boner bomb? So yeah, the, the gay bomb's a thing. You can look it up. There's actually a Wikipedia on it. I first told him about it, right? And he's like, "There's no way." Yeah. And then <laughs> the gay bomb and halitosis bomb are formal names for two <laughs> non-lethal. Wait, halitosis bomb? They're literally putting together a super stink bomb. Mm-hmm. Basically, basically, they wanted to make either A, they have all bad breath, or B, they have all just the worst B.O. and puff. Anyway, non-lethal psychochemical weapons that the United States, that the United States Air Force Research Lab speculated about producing. The theories involved discharging sex pheromones over enemy forces in order to make them sexually attracted to each other. So you know how cops are, like, trained to, like, withstand... Like, they have to be sprayed in the fucking face. Yeah, with mace. Unguarded face with mace. Can you imagine the army having to go through this training? <laughs> well, how did I say it yesterday when we were talking about it? Like, one of them would be, like, hanging off they the had, wall naked with their yeah, ass out getting fucked. The, and, the fucking crotch monkeys or something like that. Oh, like, yeah, like, they were, uh, <laughs> spider monkeys. <laughs> They're fucking like spider monkeys. Hang it off the wall. What if one blew up in like what if one blew up on like one of the ships? There would be semen everywhere. <laughs> now I mean at least we can look back at it and laugh. A gay bomb. Yeah. Wild and I laughed for like twenty minutes straight till my I couldn't laugh anymore last night about this. It was 
It was an experience. No joke. Like, we we, we just, after watching Orgasmo, we sat and talked about the gay bomb. And no, no, imagine this. Being a married man and being on the other side and getting hit with it and having to go home to your wife and explain that you cheated on her with another man because America hit you with a gay bomb. Imagine being someone not affected by it and all the other guys just look at you like... (laughs) Like you're like like a steak. You're a steak dinner to those people. You better run, bitch. (laughs) Run. Because you're getting fucked. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you God. better you hide behind a tree throw a squirrel at him <laughs> yeah, literally throw a squirrel at him because they'll, they'll fuck the squirrel first they'll fuck whatever they can get yeah you know like you imagine you're on the back line like the front line all they've all been all hit, been hit. you're like one of the guys on the back line everyone just the smoke after they've, clears like, the smoke DBZ <laughs> style the smoke clears, <laughs> and you see, like, they're just naked all of a sudden. Clothes are on the floor, and they just t- slowly turn to you with the big fuck me eyes, like. Hey. And they're just watching you. And there's that quiet moment between you two, like, and that's in your mind. You know I'm fucked. Literally. Not figuratively. The butt cheeks are ruined from this point on, unless you run for your virginity. Your sphincter is gone. Yes. There, there's going to be a train, and it's not going to be a fun train. It's going to be a pain train. Like, you know, I mean, some of them are probably fucking each other, right? I get that. That'd be fine. But there's going to be that one guy out there that don't have a partner. <laughs> one, one to 12 guys that don't have a partner. It's an army. And guess what? Next thing you know, you're it's, it's squid games, but your butthole. Can you... <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine being the American army just watching this happen? That I, I could you imagine telling the Ugh. story of this happening? We talked uh, about the gay bomb. We talked about all the scary stuff that could happen, and all the all the war changes a man. It man. changes a man. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Until then, uh, we'll see you next week on the next podcast episode. Thanks for being with us. Stay nerdy. Stay sexy. Always.